So in this video, we'll be going over Caden Smith, who was a rookie tight end last season, number 82. He was selected by the 49ers in the sixth round of the 2019 draft, was released by them after the preseason, I believe, then signed with the Giants, and had a really good second half once Evan Engram went down with his injury. So we'll get some good, you know, run blocking uh, reps out of him. We'll see some good um, pass catching reps as well. Hopefully we'll get a good uh, view of him. I looked at the final two games of the year, so a decent sample size. He only started about, I would say, probably eight games last year, six to eight games or something like that. But he was pretty impressive, so let's get into it. So the first play, an inside handoff, and he's going to pull over here between Solder and Hernandez. And he's going to block this linebacker right here. He does lead with his helmet a lot, but I think he has a pretty good impact. I mean, it definitely makes a difference right here. I would not say it was his fault that Barkley was tackled. That probably was, let's see, it was probably Hall of Peel, honestly. That's Nigel Bradham, who we just went over in a, the last Giants video, making that tackle there. But I think as for Caden Smith, does a pretty good job there. He squares up pretty well. The hand placement wasn't great there. And there are some really good run blocking reps from him and some that were not good at all. So I would definitely see a bunch of, uh, of both sides here but for this one I don't think it was that bad but definitely the hand placement has to be a bit more inside in my opinion so this was a play where Smith was called for uh, holding on a pass blocking rep right here so his responsibility is to block this man uh, for pass blocking, he gets a chip from Saquon Barkley. I'm not sure if he was expecting it, but watch Caden Smith. I think it was his right hand goes behind the defensive end, and I guess once the ref saw that, they threw the flag right there. So that's an unfortunate ref for him right there. Jones was scrambling, threw it away. So as for Caden Smith, I mean, as I said, the hand placement on the run block wasn't that great. We'll see right here. Once again, goes pretty high, and he's kind of giving the defender the leverage here. You, of course, you want your hands to go lower than your opponent. So the defender is driving him, has his hands lower, basically pushing him with his elbow at this point. But definitely has all the leverage here. Gets help from Saquon. Not sure if he was expecting it. But, of course, once your hands are behind the defender's head, basically, the refs are probably going to call a holding play right there, a holding call, I should say. So that stuff has to be fixed, obviously. So here's another play where Caden Smith will pull to the left side. And he was supposed to be like a weak side blocker on this play but Saquon Barkley ends up going from over here on the right side to bouncing it back out to the left side so Caden Smith's block right here actually becomes pretty important so he does a good job of opening up a hole I think his recognition on this play was really good because you can see after Caden Smith makes contact right here he turns his head to find out where the ball carrier is I'm sure he sees Saquon in the uh, side of his eye right here and by this point, he's basically creating this hole. If he didn't maintain that block, then his man would have been in this area to make that run stop. So I think Caden Smith does a good job here. Of course, he could have held that block a bit longer. But I also have to credit him for just the impact on this block. I mean, that is some tough, that is really tough right there. He had both his feet off the ground at this moment. That's probably not a good thing necessarily. But the impact on his blocks, these linebackers and the safeties will definitely feel it. So I definitely have to applaud him for that. And he does hold that block long enough to give Saquon a pretty solid gain. So here's a play where Smith, who has his hand in the ground right here next to Nate Solder, he has a pretty solid gain right here on a seam route. So on this play, I think they send a corner blitz, and then they have a safety move over here. So with this safety moving over here in the zone, it kind of opens up some space right here for Caden Smith to make this catch. So we'll just run the tape here. Corner blitzes. He's wide open in the zone. Jones sees it, gets rid of the ball in time. And I like the thing I like about Smith is he adds some yards after catch potential. I mean, some tight ends will just kind kind of fall down with this and not really go anywhere. He only picks up about maybe five extra yards, five, six, seven yards, but it adds up. So I'm kind of happy with his yards after catch ability. That's definitely a positive thing about Smith. He does have um, some elusiveness and mobility to his game, so I like that for sure. So he's really good at just making contested catches. This one was not necessarily contested, but there are some examples in here of him making some really good receptions and showing his strong hands. So here's another passing play. Here's Smith right here. He runs like a 15-yard out route around like the 50-yard line. So we'll watch him here. And I, I like what I saw from Daniel Jones on this play specifically because it showed me his growth throughout the year. So this was the final week of the year. So obviously this is like his 12th start. But I remember earlier in the year, Daniel Jones, I know this is more of a Caden Smith video, but I remember Daniel Jones had an interception on a play like this against the Redskins to uh, that guy that was with um, DeAndre Baker, Quentin Dunbar. Uh, he threw an interception to him on a similar play to this, and this is a tough play for a quarterback because it's all about reading this cornerback. 
Um, basically, if he steps up, which he does here on Shepard, that means you're going to have some room here on the, uh, you know, towards the sideline on an out route. But if the cornerback baited him into that, he could have obviously stepped back and intercepted this ball. So it's all about reading that one corner. So it is a tough play for a quarterback to make. And Caden Smith shows his good hands. It was a great throw in stride. Keeps his feet in bounds and once again picks up an extra couple yards. So nice job by Jones and Caden Smith on that play. So here's another passing play, and Smith's going to take a pretty big hit here, so I'll just let it go. But uh, definitely gets a blindside hit from this safety right here, so definitely a tough one. He did drop the ball, so there's not much he could have done in this situation. I think once Jones sees this safety creeping up here, it's kind of like, maybe we should pull it back and not throw this ball. But... He does lay out a big hit, does drop the ball, and I think the only thing Caden Smith really could have done was just catch that ball and sit down with it, but I kind of like that he wants to get extra yards after the catch. Of course, you have to hold on to the ball first, so I can't really blame anyone for that right there. I think if Jones held the ball just a tiny bit longer, right, did like a pump fake maybe, they would have had Golden Tate for a nice seam route right here, but unfortunately that was not the case. So nice play right there by the Eagles safety and for Caden Smith, that's just, you know, wrong place, wrong time basically. So here's a play where I'm assuming the Eagles were just going all out for the run here because, I mean, Caden Smith is left wide open right here. So you're going to see him make a catch up here. So last time we saw him drop a ball on impact, and here he fumbles the ball on impact. I think that's the same safety, honestly, making a hit right there. So he did recover his own fumble, which is great news. I forget if they called it incomplete or not. I think it was ruled. Uh, yeah, I think that's a completion. It looked like two steps making a turn so yeah i think that's a completion called a fumble luckily he recovers the ball so that definitely could have been a uh, a tragic thing right there but does a good job of just jumping on it but you know obviously he has to hold on to the ball better um from what we've seen in the past two plays i don't have much of a concern about it i think the guy has strong hands there are examples of it um unfortunately right here this is just one of those plays where he gets hit really hard by the safety once again he was able to knock the ball loose and i think he just has to be a little extra careful on plays like that Here's one of those plays where he shows those strong hands. So he's right next to Nick Gates right here. He helps him a bit for a split second, then goes out for his route. Just a quick curl around the 40 and, well, 45, I should, or 35, I should say, and shows the strong hands right there. So he's able to survive the hit from Malcolm Jenkins and hold on to that ball. So we've seen the past two plays. He has not been able to hold on to the ball, but he shows a play like this where he has really strong hands. The throw is a bit high. He's able to come down with it, kind of like a Tyree-type catch. I mean, not the same circumstances, obviously, but still kind of similar. So, Caden Smith right here, 82. We'll watch him. He'll help chip um, Nick Gates' this guy real quick right there. Then sits down in the zone, and Daniel Jones makes a throw across his body, and he shows the really strong hands right there. So I like what I saw there for sure. As I said earlier, he does have instances where he shows some really strong hands, and that's definitely one of them for sure. As I mentioned in like the very beginning, there were some run blocking plays where he was clearly overpowered, and here's one of them. He's going to be covered by Sterling Shepard going against Nigel Bradham once again. I mean, I, I like this guy. I hope the Giants give him a shot, honestly. So... He does not square up that block, and Bradham knocks him over and makes a tackle on the same play. So, pretty crazy play there by Bradham. But for Caden Smith, he's never able to basically turn his shoulders. I mean, he's never able to square up that block, basically. And, you know, he's going one way, and Bradham's going the other way. He has all the momentum in the world right here. Caden Smith loses his balance, falls over, and Bradham still was able to make this tackle. So, this is obviously, you can't have that from a blocking standpoint for your tight end. Obviously, you need to find a way to turn your shoulders more if you're um, Caden Smith. It's a very tough play because it just happens in such a split second, but he needs to find a way to get his hands basically on the pecs of Nigel Bradham and does not do it, doesn't square himself, and due to that, he blows up the play. So here's a run blocking play where Smith is asked to basically have a seal block on the right side, and all he has to do basically is just create a wall here, you know what I mean, and just create this this hole here for Saquon. And he does a pretty good job of it. He could have held the block a bit longer, but it did get the job done. That's on Brandon Graham, I believe. So this is actually the touchdown of Saquon. So he was a big reason for it. So I do think he could have held this block a bit longer. He kind of over-pursued here in the beginning a bit, but... The play still worked, and the guy scored a touchdown. So I think for Caden Smith, that goes down as him helping the Giants score a touchdown, so definitely a positive, and this is against a pretty good defensive end. So I would say a good job for sure. I think the hand placement's better than what we've seen in, in most of these uh, videos so far. So I would say for the most part, a pretty good job by Smith right there. 
So I think Caden Smith can be a very valuable piece of this receiving game for the Giants to be a chain mover. And this might be an instance where it's prevent defense. I think the Eagles had a pretty decent lead at this point in the game. But you see them drop back in a zone here. They leave all the underneath stuff open. And here's Smith sitting down in the zone and just sitting down and making the catch. So if he has those reliable hands, which I do think he does for the most part, and can just sit down in zones like this and just keep the chains moving, I think him and Golden Tate, even Evan Engram, can have very big roles on this team next year in doing stuff like this. So I know based on the situation, the score was probably out of hand at this point. But the Eagles, I mean, look, they're in prevent defense. I get it. But Caden Smith here does a good job of knowing where the soft spot in the zone is, sitting down, and just making the catch. So I like what I saw there. Here is a screen pass to Saquon Barkley on top of the screen here. Smith is right here, so he's going to throw one of the more valuable blocks on this play. He was supposed to, at least. But he was a bit over-aggressive on his block and almost whiffed on it, basically. But Saquon Barkley, being who he is, somehow turned this into a pretty huge gain because he's just amazing. So he turned this into like a 30, 40-yard gain. So we'll watch Caden Smith again. He kind of does over-pursue on this play. So obviously his job, of course, is going to be out here to block this guy and allow Saquon to get outside so we'll see here I mean he kind of over over pursues to the sideline a bit and probably should have been inside more so he does over pursue to the defender's left shoulder and you see him kind of reach out with his left arm there and by that point it's already too late so by that point he gets by him but Saquon Barkley was able to have enough explosiveness to get there in time before this tackle was even made so Caden Smith's miscue is really just a, a non portion of this play and he's able to turn it into a big game. But as for Caden Smith, I think he has to do a better job himself of making this block. We'll see it one more time. So you see by this point, he's kind of like almost already past the cornerback. He should probably be inside here a bit more. I know it's easy to say in hindsight, but still, he kind of over-pursued on this one for sure. Doesn't make the block, doesn't contain the block, and then therefore his man was free. But Saquon had the speed to get out there in time, luckily. So this was a tough catch here by Caden Smith. He basically had three people on the Redskins defense convert at the same time on him. But he does a good job of keeping his legs going, picking up a few extra yards on this play. And that's something I love about Smith. He does not really like go down too easily. He will fight for those extra yards. Hopefully he never fumbles on a play where he's trying to get extra yards. Hopefully he's smart about it. But you see here he keeps his legs churning and is able to pick up a few extra yards there. So I like what I saw there for sure. It was a good job of, you know, we've seen receivers many times like this. They will kind of, you know, take their eye off the ball and look upfield before catching it. He does a good job of looking this in it looks like. Makes the catch, makes sure he has it. Then kind of backs into defenders, keeps his legs going, and somehow stays up and picks up a few yards. So I love what I saw there. It's a pretty small player for the most part, but when you just dissect it all, kind of, you know, he does a lot of good things on this play, not only just making the catch, but able to keep his feet going and just picking up a few extra yards on that play. So here was Smith's first touchdown of the game. So he's going to be lined up right here next to Nick Gates. It's a pretty simple concept. They're in zone defense, and once this high safety go not high safety, but just once the safety goes out to uh, Sterling Shepard, it becomes a pretty easy decision as to where to put this ball, and I think Daniel Jones makes an absolutely perfect throw. You don't want to lead him out here too much, because then this guy can hit Smith and knock the ball loose. You kind of want to throw it to his like you know inside shoulder, his right shoulder in this instance, and that's exactly where Daniel Jones puts it. I know I'm praising him a lot in this video. Nice you know spike and touchdown celebration there. So it was pretty easy for him. I don't think anyone touch Smith off the line here we'll see Smith right here obviously don't think he was touched by anybody on this play yeah you see the linebacker right here is in zone so he's not going to get him and once he's past him Daniel Jones realizes hey he's wide open so let's just take this touchdown and go with it um really the only guy that could have made this play was this safety here but like when you're on the left hash mark it's tough to get all the way over here so once you're Jones and you see Right, this this guy in zone is going to pass him off to him. Once you see this safety go to Sterling Shepard's side of the field, then you basically know where to put this ball. And Caden Smith makes a simple catch here, but hey, it's a touchdown, and hopefully he scores many of those in the future for the Giants. So people talk about receiver and quarterback chemistry a lot, and it's just kind of like you're in the other person's mind and you know what they're going to do. But this is a play, obviously, where Caden Smith and Daniel Jones were not on the same page. And honestly, I have to agree with Daniel Jones and his decision-making on this play. So... We'll see what this angle shows. I'm pretty sure it's going to show the same exact thing I just saw. It's actually not going to show him, I don't think. But as you can see here, so he's going to be followed by, I don't know if this is Landon Collins or some safety, whoever it is. 
where he's followed on his right shoulder, on his back, basically. If you're Daniel Jones, the last thing you want to do is basically throw the ball to Caden Smith's right shoulder here. That would make no sense. You want to throw it here because there's not really a Redskins defender on the left side of Caden Smith aside from this safety all the way back here. So if you throw it low and to his left, it's probably going to be a completion. But for some reason, Caden Smith, I don't know if it's based on the route concept or him not knowing where the defender was, decides to kind of cut back to his right, and that just creates this miscommunication. But I think if uh, if Smith kind of drifted to his left here, he could have made like maybe a, a catch where he laid out for it. Or honestly, just made a simple catch. But I think if he just stood here instead of kind of going back to his right, this would have been a completion. So I kind of side with Daniel Jones on this play. I obviously don't know the exact route concept of what he was supposed to do. But as you can see, kind of at the end here, if Smith was more over here instead of trying to come back to this side for whatever reason, this would have been a completion. So on the previous run blocking plays, I was not really a big fan of the hand, the hand placement for Caden Smith. But here he is right in front of number 17, who I guess is Cody Core. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's him. And he's going to block Montez Sweat, a first-round rookie, and does a great job of locking his arms and keeping him in front of him the whole time. So I think Sweat gets involved at the end of this play, but I'm pretty sure it was a Nate Solder block that didn't really maintain itself right there. So, yeah, it was Nate Solder who kind of gave up that, that um, play right there. But for Caden Smith, he does a great job of just locking his arms, which we haven't seen much of. And, you know, of course, Montez Sweat's hands are a bit lower, but at the same time, he's able to keep his balance, which is the most important part, does not get overpowered here, and stands his ground against Sweat. So I love what I saw right there, and if we can get more of that and run blocking opportunities for Smith next year... We're looking at a much better player because, as I said before, there were some times in run blocking where he was overpowered and didn't look so good, but this was a really good rep from him in my opinion. So here's a play, a running play, where Smith is asked to hold the seal block on the left side, and he did not hold it long enough. It started out pretty well, but then he just loses momentum, and his man makes the tackle or joins in on the tackle. So if Smith was able to maintain this block right here, Probably would have been a pretty big run play, I'm assuming, because Zeitler lays out a good block here, and Smith does create a hole at first, but eventually he loses it, and Barkley, you know, picks up maybe a few yards on that play. So unfortunately, Smith didn't hold that block very long. It started out pretty well. I think he was in the right position to have that seal block happen. Of course, you kind of want to lead your guy inside here and create a wall once again just to make Saquon have a hole to the outside. But, you know, he does get overpowered here at the end, unfortunately. And I think once Smith realizes that Saquon's going to be going behind him, you kind of want to shift your momentum to the left here just to allow yourself to make that block. But unfortunately, that does not happen. You see he loses all leverage right here and then, you know, basically makes the tackle. So this this started out all right, but it didn't really end too well. So I definitely would not say that was a good a good play for Caden Smith. But at least there's some positives there of it starting out well and him being in the right spot. He just needs to hold that block longer. So here's the final play. It's that walk-off touchdown he scores against Landon Collins in overtime. We love to see that. They are in man coverage here, and it took a perfect throw to get it in there. But Daniel Jones is really good with the ball placement, especially intermediate stuff. So that's exactly what we see right here. I wouldn't call that a stick and nod out. I mean, I think Corey Ballantyne in this game was, like, torched on one by, um, I forget the guy's name, something like Sims or Mims on the uh, Redskins. I don't know if I can call them the Redskins anymore. I know they're changing their name. But it's just a simple slant, basically. And then, you know, he has maybe half a step of separation. Eh, I'd call it a full step. But, you know, it's it's tough to make this throw for sure. It has to be in a perfect spot. And Kane Smith has to be able to, you know, haul this in. So you see the outstretched arms of Collins here. So this has to be put in a perfect spot. And that's what Daniel Jones does so we have to be excited about that so a walk-off touchdown awesome stuff right there so for Caden Smith I would you know I'm just gonna let this play in the background but I would say he's a keeper I, I don't think he's a scrub or anything like that I don't know if I would be a star I think he needs to work on the run blocking technique and stuff like that for sure as a receiver I like the potential I like the yards after catch I love how he doesn't go down easily and fights for every yard and I do think he has some pretty strong hands so I do think as a receiver there is some potential for him um, I think his his success comes down to Evan Engram's health, honestly. I don't really see him being anything great as a tight end number two. But if Evan Engram goes down next year, which is definitely a possibility, and he's asked to have a larger role, then if he's given starter snaps, he can put up some big numbers for sure. So I really think it comes down to playing time. Will he see the field enough? But I do think as a tight end too, it's definitely a great guy to have. He's definitely a keeper in my opinion. So, you know, we'll see what happens for him in 2020. But let me know what you guys think about Caden Smith. What are your expectations? What did you see from here that you liked? That 
that you didn't like. I'm sure the run blocking stuff was a bit iffy. And, you know, this is me watching two games. I did not go back and watch, you know, every game he started in. So, you know, that's kind of like on me. But, you know, if you want to go back and watch every single snap of him, then by all means. But, you know, from what I saw here, there were some good things, some average things, and some bad things. It wasn't all perfect for sure. But, you know, there were enough positives for me to be excited about this guy. He's only 23, a six-round pick. He's 6'5", so... I think he has all the all the makings to be a good starting tight end. I just don't know with Evan Engram here if he'll get that chance, but we'll see what happens with his health next year. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I think a lot of you want a Darius Slayton video similar to this one, so I'll probably work on that sometime soon. So we'll go over him and some stuff I expect from him, stuff I liked and all that stuff. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you next time.